Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 45 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lindicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialists, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have back on the show as one of our special guests from before, Ed Featherston. Ed is the Vice President and Principal Architect at Cloud Technology Partners. In this week's show, we will be talking about Australia's criminal information and reporting service, Crime Stoppers, has announced it will be implementing a new online reporting tool with the Citadel Group organisation. Citadel's Keep Us Safe application is hosted on Microsoft Azure, which received accreditation for its government-configured clouds to be used for Australian government data classified up to protected level. Hi, Dave and Ed. It's a warm welcome to you both, and it's exciting to have you both back on the Australia show. And Ed, welcome back. It's great to have you on another show. Oh, thanks, Brad. It's great, it's great to be back. I always love chatting with you guys about technology. It's great to be back on the show, and it's great to have Ed on. Yeah, it truly is. So look, a question for you, Dave, to open the show up would be, uh, will this certification mean more cloud usage in Australia public sector? Yeah, I think it will. I mean, how bad is client crime in Australia? We have to actually move the uh, application for Crime Stoppers to the cloud to allow it to scale. I mean, are you guys having some kind of a big uh, meltdown there where people out in the street <laughs> with uh, you know guns and uh, knives? Uh, so that was a little concerning there. But it, it, this is kind of... Uh, uh, instance of somebody who's getting wise with utilization of the cloud. And it looks like Azure, Microsoft went through a government um, certification process and they got, you know, quote and so it's government configured, which I guess is uh, the way the Australian government kind of rates cloud computing systems. We have similar things here like FedRAMP uh, within the uh, federal government. So I think once we see uh, little applications such as this, you know, on the cloud, not that this is a, a little application unto itself, but it's certainly a smaller problem domain than larger government stuff. You know, we're going to see a mass migration. Uh, and so Australia is already ahead of the other countries, best I can tell, in migrating workloads into the cloud. Uh, and so this is really just going to open up the floodgates. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, it, it, absolutely. And I think this is a classic example of well, like you say, crime crime stopper type stuff is, is not necessarily a small application, but starting with smaller steps to gain success, it's an ideal type of application for moving it to the cloud where you can get the economies of scale. Um, I find it a fascinating application because to me, it's one of those things I, I, of crowdsourced data, of you know the data coming in from everybody all around, similar to some of the GPS apps that are out there. And then using the cloud backend, tacking in machine learning to filter through, categorize, and, and validate the data that's coming into the system. And it, these kind of stepping stones, which would have high visibility to the public, also helps government groups wanting to move other things in because if they get the public on board that, yeah, this is a really good idea, it becomes a better sell for them to try and move things into the cloud in the public sector. So what do you think about accreditation in general for the governments, not just the Australian governments, but the federal government in the U.S. and the uh, European governments that are governments that are doing cloud certification and China that's doing cloud certification and Japan and uh, Singapore. And I'm, I'm just running across lots of these right now where, you know, kind of got into it a couple, three years ago. And now everybody's trying to get their stuff accredited. Is it uh, helpful? Is it something that's going to help? I, I think it is because a, a lot of the governmental at all levels, whether it be down at the local all the way up to the, the federal levels, there, there, there's always concern about information and systems being, quote, outside of their control. Um, and so they tend to be a little bit nervous. And I think these types of certifications help validate for the organizations that it's safe for them to take advantage of these capabilities, which in the long run will benefit them both from a cost and uh, a service providing capability. Um, I mean, in the public sector, it, it's a different paradigm than the private sector. Private sector, it's all about being able to ultimately make money down the long run. In the public sector, it's about providing service, providing service to the people. And cloud scalabilities provide lots of options there once everybody gets comfortable with the idea of moving to the cloud.
And I think that ease of use is going to be you know, basically the path of least resistance, you know, versus going through that, those government procurement cycles that are really fun, where you know, it's taking a year to get a piece of uh, server hardware up and running, even on these larger contracts, get it configured correctly, uh, get it validated, get it deployed, get it installed in a government data center, where if we have Azure you know, or AWS in some instances or Google, you know, which is certified, uh, then we can just go ahead and take the instances that we need. And we don't have to go through this big bureaucratic red tape thing they have to go through. So uh, absolutely, you actually raise a really good point that, that I hadn't thought of from the fact of hardware procurement cycles in the government sector, especially at the state and federal governments here in the US, can, can go on for a year or more, at which point when they procure the hardware, it's already outdated. <laughs> Uh, whereas if they're moving to the cloud, you're already on the latest versions because the cloud vendors are the ones that are keeping things up to date. So you don't run into that issue. So I think that's another added benefit of the cloud for the public sector. So there's always a downside in, in doing this. So, so for the government, whatever the potential downsides down the road and then leveraging cloud-based systems, government configured uh, according to this stuff, Australia certified, Australian government certified based instances of the cloud. Well, it, 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 there's there's always the risks and fears of, of of breaches or outages that that impact the organizations. The same as in the private sector, um, going to the cloud doesn't 100 percent guarantee you'll never get breached. Going to the cloud doesn't 100 percent guarantee you'll never go down. Um, the the sad part is is that when and if those kinds of things happen in the cloud that will leave a bad taste in people's mouths and feed the frenzy of maybe we shouldn't go to the cloud, maybe we should back out. So there's always the risk that 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 you have some failures or issues that that start causing a, almost a cultural backlash uh, for all the wrong reasons. And, and then, then you've got to start back from square one again. So what about lock-in and kind of price concerns down the road? So in other words, we, we build this thing cloud natively on Azure, um, five years down, this is, I'm not saying this would happen with Azure, I'm just using it as an instance. You know, prices start to change, other people drop their prices significantly, they remain the same. You know, what about the ability to kind of move to different cloud-based platforms? Should the government kind of maintain a multi-cloud, you know, certification realm so we can have catalogs of cloud services and basically leverage them as we need them? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's not a bad idea for them to, con to consider that and to keep that in mind, similar to other infrastructure type products that, that people have had fears of vendor lock-ins over the decades. I mean, da database vendor lock-in was always a fear so that, you know, people would try to have multiple database platforms in their environment so that they didn't necessarily have a lock-in. Cloud at a larger scale, it does have that same kind of risk. And, and uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, that the future is multi-cloud as far as that, that, it, that nobody will be, it, no large organization will be in a single cloud environment just out of the reality of the world. Um, but it, it's also a matter of if they're just setting their foot in the cloud, from my perspective, they should be trying one first just so that they can get used to what operating the cloud is like and then start branching out into a multi-cloud type of strategy going forward once they've got all of their processes in place, they've got their people in place that understand how cloud works and goes forward. But in the long run, any large organization and governments obviously fall under that. I fully expect will be multi-cloud environments. I don't picture them being on any one particular platform. Yeah, one last question. We'll kick it back to the uh, Palmy. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, going forward, I guess they're leveraging a, ba a base level of security in the, into these things. And you know, as they're building this and basically become certified, should the concern be that that base level of security still needs to be customized and, and that we're, we're probably have a false sense of security, um, that the certification will lead them down a secure path where they should have customization, different security platforms in there to consider? Uh, well, one of the things that, that, that I always say, and, I, and I've seen you uh, write about it at various points and everything, is going to the cloud doesn't mean you give up your responsibility for your security. Cloud provides you a very good environment for being able to build a very good secure platform. It also, because of the flexibility of it, if, if you go and point a gun at your toe and pull the trigger, you could shoot your toe off very easily. 
Um, so maintaining vigilance over your environment, over your security infrastructure, just dropping into the cloud by itself doesn't 100 percent guarantee that your application uh, stack on up is going to be secure unless you take it on yourself in your security organization to make sure that happens. So that it, and, and that is one thing I see people sometimes fall into the trap of if I go to the cloud, I'm going to be guaranteed to be secure. And it's it not it's not guaranteed. You still own the responsibility for your security. the The cloud provides you the capabilities of being secure, but you ultimately own the responsibility of making sure that your environment and your applications are secure. Well said. Hey, hey, I, I got a question for you, Brad. So, what's kind of the the scuttlebutt uh, in country about this cloud certification going forward? Is anybody paying attention to it? Is this kind of a big deal, or is this something that's just happening behind the scenes? I think it's a bit of both, actually, Dave. There's a lot going on behind the scenes when it comes to the public sector in Australia because, uh, you know, we're seeing, obviously, we spoke to National Australia Bank. Obviously, that's more private sector, but where they're doing a lot of in-house training. But the Australian government as well, in general, I think is putting about 6,000 6, or so public sector workers through an Azure uh, or Azure as your as you, you, United States people call it Azure, I call it Azure. Uh, so there's a lot of training going on behind the scenes that already for existing staff. So I think it's a bit of both, but there's definitely um, uh, a real drive behind getting the certifications that are going to give people the opportunity in the public sector. So yeah, it's a bit of both really. Uh, but it's, it's this this show's been quite interesting because I mean we started off talking about you know how this is uh, the, the sort of Crime Stoppers is. Is, is using now uh, an app, uh, the, the V Responder application in the cloud on, the, on the, the Azure platform. But I'd be interested to find out from you guys actually, how, how would you see this working in the US? Uh, maybe that's a, a question for Ed to come in and jump in on. Would, that, would, would the US use a similar sort of thing? Do you think this would work? And do you think they would use Azure or AWS or, or Google? Or a bit of both maybe, or all of them? I it, I I mean which which platform I think would be 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 up for grabs this type of application I could very easily see being used and leveraged here in the U.S. If you just think about the fact of how how many people um, social stream crimes and incidents that are happening nowadays through various pieces of media I I, I think especially American society is already sort of ingrained in using their portable mobile devices for reporting on what's going on from a crime perspective so that an application that actually feeds in through to some central authority, police authority, I can see have a huge benefit and I can see people actually grabbing onto it. Whose platform it ended up on, God only knows. I mean, because, you know, a a AWS is literally the 800 pound gorilla in the world on, on the cloud platforms, but a any one of the platforms could host something like that and be operational. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. The only thing I would add is they have a tendency, you know, these sort of applications here are normally state level or even town level. Uh, so they're all over the place in terms of how they do their cloud adoption. And so they're normally with the CIOs of the, the state and local governments that are kind of, you know, building this, which is kind of weird because you think it would have a, you know, a better um, jumping off point if this was done at a national or federal level. We're just not able to do that. We do have federal you know, crime information databases that the FBI supports it's shared, and some of those things are in the cloud. Um, but but again, I think it's catch as catch can and what clouds are providing. And and right now, uh, um, AWS and Azure are the 800 pound gorilla. Certainly, uh, Amazon is much bigger. Uh, but going forward, in terms of the ability to kind of capture the state and local governments and the government market in general, you know, it is kind of up for grabs. I mean, it's I think it's. Uh, you know, 5% of the government systems last time I looked are in the cloud, and that's including SaaS-based systems. Well, that's not very much. And considering the hundreds of thousands of applications that they have in the federal government level, there's lots of running room and lots of, uh, I like Ed's term, up for grabs uh, in terms of the ability to get those applications on the cloud. Great. Thank you, guys. Great show. Great show. Thank you so much. Ed, thank you so much for being back on the show this week. It's awesome. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Like I said, I always love chatting with you and David about technology. Yeah, fantastic. And thanks, Dave. Thanks for being part of the, uh, the Australia show. Always a pleasure and great having Ed and his commentary. It's always spot on.
Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. Remember, you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the future shows, which would be awesome. We appreciate all the subscribers. Uh, and also, you can get Ed on uh, Twitter, which is E Featherston. I'll put the links below. Uh, Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Uh, we hope you enjoyed watching. Ed's going to be with us for the C-Suites and for the training show this week, which is pretty awesome. So stay tuned for those. Until next week.